Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name is Andy. My channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're going to hit up Twitter, see what people are talking about. It's probably going to be pretty heavy on precious metals, gold, silver, platinum. A lot of things are happening over there, so a lot of people are posting in that area. Uh, a lot of the times uh, when people start posting a lot of information about a certain sector or subject, uh, it's generally the time to go buy something else. Although, uh, gold and silver do look very good. Uh, they've got a lot of momentum behind them, and we're breaking out of these very big patterns. We're also seeing very long, decade-plus-long patterns being broken uh, in a positive fashion. <laughs> I like how the baby uh, is right there <laughs> that I posted. Um, yeah, so let's go over it. I'm going to share my financial opinion across all this stuff. Uh, if you guys need any help with anything, definitely check out findinghyphenvalue.com. Uh, that is where I share all of my opinions openly about whatever companies uh, there are and the charts uh, with those companies. So let's dive in. Let's take a look. Uh, again, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at finding uh, underscore finance and the website is here. So U.S. demographics, largest five-year cohorts and 10 most common ages in 2022. Um, I'm just looking at this graph here. And if you look at the home buying years, um, it's this chunk all in here. So you've got a lot of 20, you know, mid 20s and uh, 30s is that big chunk. And that's, we have to look at this going backwards this way. Um, so the 40s, you can see a big dip here uh, around 50 years old. And then this is increasing in demographics as you go up into home buying years. The average home buying uh, age is around this, this age right in here, about 35, 36 years old. So we still have a large demographic coming up uh, for another at least couple of years uh, before that demographic kind of slows down a little bit. But that's why I'm sharing this is because of the home buying years population. Uh, here is uh, another ratio here. It says silver miners incredibly cheap versus also cheap gold miners. The ratio is still rock bottom on the day of a breakout. Never seen that. Lots of fuel to run. So this ratio is rock bottom, agreed. Uh, I, I chart this GDX versus SILJ, which is a uh, basically a, a head and shoulders pattern. This is an inverted shoulder, head, shoulder with the neckline up here. We could see some crazy stuff happen in SILJ. Uh, GDX, I think crazy stuff's going to happen there against uh, a bunch of different assets like energy services. Um, oil, uranium, it just the market conditions right now are just so ripe for precious metals and even the mining companies to go higher. Um, I think we could see some crazy moves coming up. Uh, it doesn't mean when I say that, that it just, that it's going to go straight higher or straight lower. Everything moves in waves and it always moves um, kind of at unexpected times. So the more that people expect it, um, the less you should expect a large move to happen. But from a ratio perspective, SOJ looks really stinking cheap, uh, and it's in a very good location for uh, someone to be looking at it. And you could also look at the companies that compose that if you want to have individual company picks. Um, XAU versus gold ratio. This is the gold and silver mining companies versus gold itself on a quarterly basis. Uh, the second half of 2023 will be very interesting indeed. Uh, we've got an inverted shoulder head shoulder on a arc that is right on the arc. We're breaking this other falling wedge pattern. Guys, this is like a dream within a dream within a dream because you have a falling wedge on an arc, which we're at on the arc with a inverted head and shoulders. <laughs> Those are three patterns um, that all stack up to say something. And when we break out of this, we could see a violent, big move. Um, remember, this is the gold and silver mining companies against gold. Gold also has multiple uh, setups against the dollar with a cup and handle pattern on a very long-term basis. Then we have another uh, flag pattern that is creating that, that handle as well, the, the cup and handle. So I think gold's going to rock it here. And I think the gold and silver mining companies could go along for a ride for a very big move. Uh, SILJ is probably the least, the most undervalued uh, of the bunch. If you've got the uh, 
cojones to ride the volatility in some of these small junior silver mining companies. Um, coming on down, we've got gold. So I, I thought this was a really cool chart here. Uh, what he says is this is the weight of evidence is strong. Here's another exhibit. This is gold versus the 10-year yield. Uh, I don't really follow this too much, but they do move inversely to each other. Gold goes up when the 10-year yield generally goes down uh, or goes sideways to slightly lower. And what he's got here is we've got a nice good support level going across here. Uh, we've got another support level here that it broke back in the day. So 2000. Uh, one or two, we broke that that resistance line and really started to head higher. Um, you know what this looks like? And, and this is just off the top of my head by looking at this. This almost looks like total bank credit uh, divided by uh, divided by GDP. That's what it is. Total bank credit divided by GDP. Almost the same exact chart as this. But uh, look at that. We, we got a nice good uh, crossover here. We're right on support. We could see a big move and a falling wedge here. I love all these patterns, guys. It's really stacking up. So that's uh, gold versus the 10-year yield. Uh, I, I like Tavi's response here. Um, someone had responded. Let's let's go to it real quick. I just want to show you the response here. Uh, so he's got silver here. And then this guy says, what a great asset. You just have to wait 12 years or so to make a profit, maybe. This is the stupidest remark I've ever heard in my life. Uh, what you want to do is you want to identify market conditions for when these assets go up. The technicals are basically telling you partially what, when those market conditions are ripening. This is telling us that we are ripening for a market condition change for silver to go higher. I'm showing you chart and data and, and all these different charts talking about market conditions. And when silver goes up, that's generally where you get this stagflationary environment. That is when this goes ballistic. And I'm showing chart after chart after chart. The evidence, like North Star Bad Charts uh, is, is suggesting, is stacking up for a big move in gold and silver. And then these guys come out, well, what a great asset. You just have to wait 12 years. Well, what if it is now? What if that 12 years is behind us and you don't have to wait any time? It's go time right now. So Tavi responds, and I like it. The fact that it's underperformed is precisely why you should pay attention, not the other way around. Amazes me how people look at these arguments completely the wrong way. I would much rather focus on a cheap, unloved asset than a crowded, expensive one. The way you make money in the markets is you buy something that no one is looking at, and then when everyone goes and buys it, that is your fuel for that asset to go up. That is how you make money. You cannot make money by going into a crowded, expensive trade and make a boatload of money and have the retail sector already be there. It doesn't work that way. You need to buy it when no one owns it, and then everyone has to fuel the money flows into it for that to drive that asset higher. That is how it works. Tavi, good job. You're completely right. 100% back you on that. I thought this was a really interesting chart here. It says pressuring the neckline. So if we look at this uh, DXY chart, um, we've got uh, basically a left shoulder, two of them ahead, and then two right shoulders that are developing where we could see a big break to the downside. Uh, that's going to be fuel for our commodities and precious metals. Agreed. Uh, here's one. He says, we believe there is too much focus on the USD price of gold. Have a look at this chart, the monthly gold compass <clears throat> for April 2023, featuring 73 pages of charts, is available right here. Um, but this is the, the gold price going up in various developed market currencies for 2023 year to date. And there's a lot of really good outperforming um, moves for gold against other currencies. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to come in the USD as well. Uh, Marion says, copper demand, the average onshore wind turbine will use about 3,000 pounds of copper per megawatt. The big offshore wind turbines use nearly 11,000 pounds of copper per megawatt of power. Solar energy needs a lot of copper, both in the array, cabling, and connections. So what he's got here is he's got a chart that says copper demand from energy generation and transmission, solar, wind, batteries, and non-renewable sources. 
2020, and then we go all the way to 2040. We don't have this copper, guys. I don't think we have that amount in terms of flow rates in order to make that amount of uh, renewable energy. Something's going to have to give and prices are going to go skyrocketing much, much higher. Uh, especially with the inventories we have today, which is basically nothing. Uh, we've got SILJ, another one that's just a straight up looking chart at SILJ. Uh, what we have here is another shoulder, head, head, shoulder. Uh, it matches the same thing that we looked at that shoulder, head, head, shoulder with uh, the ratio against GDX. So SILJ, you can see we're breaking out to the upside. Dude, this, this is ready to go, guys. This looks so good for a potential move higher. And SILJ uh, is one of those areas. Uh, it says, what OPEC is projecting for demand and what they are planning to produce for the rest of 2023 is going to leave an insane supply deficit gap. When I look at these numbers, I just don't believe they are going to cut production by 1 million barrels a day. So if you look at the, these are the quarters of 2023, we run these deficits starting in third quarter of 2023, actually starting in second quarter of 23, which is about now, minus 0.35. So that's 32 million barrels deficit, 170 million barrel deficit, 223 million barrel deficit in these quarters. We are going to eat through inventory dramatically. So this is an opportunity to be looking at some oil companies if you've got the cojones. Now, could there be some sort of demand destruction event between now and the end of 2023? I don't know. That's what everyone's trying to figure out. But I can tell you, if demand remains robust, there's going to be a big supply deficit gap. Uh, in oil. Now here's median monthly house payment by state. I don't believe these numbers. Colorado's at three thousand two hundred dollars as a median monthly house payment. Maybe that's the case if you were to look at it today, like the the ones that are taking out loans today. Um, I don't believe it's the median house payment that is in existence. Uh, it's probably far lower than that. That's probably the payment it is. If you were to buy a house today, given interest rates and all this other stuff, and, and that the average median, I should say the down payment that people are putting. Uh, but these are very high payments. <laughs> uh, but I want to share that. Uh, platinum divided by silver, this ratio says we can get above 50 in this ratio. Platinum should uh, start to outperform silver. We saw that outperformance here in the early bull market, last bull market. Uh, and then the late stages, silver just ripped it. This could be a spot where you go long platinum, you swap it around 120 plus ounces, and then you ride silver lower for that big move all the way to 2011. So this is from 2004 to 2011. That would be one heck of a ride. So if you purchased it down here when it was like 40 or 50 ounces, and you were to do the math here, um, you get one ounce down here of platinum. You swap it at 120, which is like right in here, 120, uh, and then you ride it all the way back down to 40. Uh, so you go, it'd be um, one ounce to 120 divided by 40, and then you get you get your uh, three ounces. So you went from one ounce to three ounces uh, in that scenario, or four ounces. Yeah, that's right. One or yeah, three ounces would be three ounces in that particular scenario. So that's good. Um, uh, the electrification of everything will trigger one of the most significant supply demand imbalances in copper's history. I don't think $10 a pound copper is out of the question. I don't think it is either. Um, the current estimates, copper, and you can see the, the future demand in blue. So that's the current versus future demand from clean energy. And these are just all ridiculous, 2X, 17X, 11X, uh, and all these different materials. So copper with the inventory levels and all these other metals, the, the inventory levels are really low, guys. And what's coming could be a big move in pricing. Uh, here's Grady, says a flag uh, right on major trend line in an up move is bullish uh, and stylish. When markets do big trend reversals, it is vital to change mindset. Then one must also ignore everything and just stay with the charts. Why? Because most have it. Most have to be wrong at major lows. Good work. Uh, here's one. It's it's on gold. It says my bet was pleased that his bet was to break out. 
um, and we're breaking out for gold uh, against the dollar. Looking really good. You can see a very big move in gold. Very bullish uh, on the gold front. Here's palladium. And I know a lot of people aren't looking at palladium, but palladium is also putting in a inverted head and shoulders, breaking the neckline uh, right now. That's also going to be positive for platinum. Uh, platinum is a substitute for pla uh, palladium. And if palladium goes higher, I think platinum will also go higher. Um, and this is platinum here. Uh, it says, why is no one talking about platinum? And uh, obviously, I talk a lot about platinum. But uh, here's our flag pattern. And we've broken this flag pattern to the upside. It looks absolutely fantastic for platinum. Uh, all of the pr precious metals look absolutely fantastic. And the gold and silver mining companies look fantastic right now. Uh, it, it's really looking solid. Uh, here's one. It says, guys, be sure to reach out to any central bankers and JPM metals desk traders. You know, they're having a rough day. If gold breaks 2100, we really should set up a GoFundMe for Jay Powell. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Uh, because yeah, he's going to be, they're going to be losing money here as uh, they're trying to hold this all together. Uh, Shabam Garg talking about oil says another week of global onshore crude inventory draws. Uh, now showing draws for ten out of the last eleven weeks, so we are drawing down, uh, just like those projections we saw up a few posts. Demand continues to be strong, supply responses is still muted, and OPEC Plus is taking significant barrels off the market from May onwards, invest accordingly, in his opinion. And there's your deficits. Um, here's one, it says, implied oil demand for gasoline, distillate, jet fuel is now firmly above 2022 and 2021. So demand is continuing to grow higher. We are still running the deficits. Um, from a fundamental standpoint, oil looks fantastic. And the, and the, the chart looks good too, from a technical standpoint. Uh, it says, sure looks like we've breached the wall and troops are storming the castle. This is silver. We're breaking through that resistance. We've broken through it. Um, we could see a big move in silver uh, to the upside. Now, keep in mind, these things move in impulse moves and then they consolidate. So we're getting the impulse move. That money's been created. The balance sheet was expanded by $400 billion. Maybe they're creating more money behind this as well. Uh, and gold and silver are reacting and accounting for that money that's being created. There'll be an impulse move higher, and then we're going to turn and look at oil and uranium, and I think those will go at some point, maybe six months from now. Big time move. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll take off immediately. Hard to say because of the, the supply deficits in oil. Uh, here's Silver from Grady. He says, Silver's now right up against big blue breakout level, looking bullish. With East taking over, remember that the East has a very long historical relationship with Silver. The second leg of the secular bull started in March of 2020 crash lows. Now in third wave, coming years will be huge. Now you have to change your mindset, like he says, to the bull market. Uh, this is the big flag pattern. So this is your uh, pull. There's your flag. And now we're going to break out of this, this pattern here. Uh, and if you notice from 2000 to 2011, that was a pretty big move in gold. We have that same setup. Uh, developing here. And I think we're going to get a big old move in a first wave, second wave, and then the third wave is start, is coming. Uh, we've talked about the third wave in commodities quite a bit and that things just don't go straight up. Uh, that third wave is coming and, and gold is showing us the way. And this is, sil this is a silver monthly, but gold and silver are, are, are paving that path for us. They usually react first. It says, when the financial crisis finally causes the Fed to cut rates, the U.S. stock and bond markets will likely sell off, having already rallied in anticipation of that capitulation. But the dollar will fall to sending investors into gold, foreign value stocks, and emerging markets. Um, yeah, and then we got oil prices here with deflation. I think that's pretty funny. But um, here's another one. It says, most people who have been successful in the stock market say the same thing that they're not smart enough to get into the market and out of it. So they tend to remain more or less in the markets at all times. But guys, that's that's where I'll end it. Lots of positive signals in the markets right now. Oil's looking good, fundamental and technical. Um, gold and silver look absolutely ballistically good. And I think that the mining companies all look incredibly good too. So um, I've already made my big stakes and positions. I'm just going to ride this thing. I'm going to ride it on higher.
Uh, I'm going to continue to look for opportunities in other sectors. I'm going to continue to look at oil, continue to look at uranium, see how these things are firming up, and maybe there's going to be opportunities um, shaping up here soon. So there's your opportunities. They're all in front of us here. Um, I don't get worried. I just hold on. And when the market conditions are changing like they are in a favorable way, uh, the way that you make money is by sitting and doing nothing. You take your positions, you find your favorite companies, you come up with a strategy or a plan, you allocate to that strategy and plan to the companies that you want uh, or the commodities directly, whether it be physical metals uh, or ETFs or whatever it is. Uh, and then if the market conditions are good and they're changing favorably and the charts are, go are good and changing favorably, you sit and you wait. And if this is the third leg uh, of the commodity bull market, it's going to be big. This is where a lot of money will be made uh, and a lot, heart, a lot of heart breaks <laughs> if you sell very early uh, and don't ride it all the way up. But uh, if you guys need any help, definitely check out the website. We've got a platinum question and answer session coming up at 7 a.m. on Saturday. Um, we do those every week. It's on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, and you guys can ask me questions directly. We can chart companies out. I can give you my opinions on all of those things. I can't give advice or anything like that, but I can give you my opinions, what I'm doing and how I'm handling things. And you guys can make your own decisions on what you want to do. But I'd uh, love to have you in the community. Uh, we'll catch everyone there who's already a member. And uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.